Hello everyone. Welcome to Christie's Stampin' Spot. Okay, let's get started. Let's get crafting. So a lot of you noticed that I put up a um, poll for the first time, like my first poll, about which, which awesome set to use. And the lovely Flowering Desert is the one that actually won. So I'm going to make a card with the Flowering Desert today. And like I said, the sunrise this morning was awesome inspiration for the card I'm going to make today. And then Ken, it's occasions time, so if you guys don't have an occasions 2019 catalog, it is awesome. So much awesome stuff. And of course the celebration. So for every $50 that you order, you qualify to earn one of these awesome products. Super awesome. And we're going to actually use the foil today, which I am so in love with the foil. The foil is absolutely spectacular. The Grapefruit Grove and Lovely Lipstick. It's one of those things that kind of blinds you on camera. So here's the Grapefruit Grove. Let's see if I can pull out a piece of the, the lovely lipstick. Look at how gorgeous that is. It is so beautiful. And you get like eight sheets, which is a lot. It doesn't seem like it is a lot like when we're so used to buying like packs of paper for 40, but seriously, there's a lot, a lot. Super awesome. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start getting crafting. Um, let's put my catalogs away. Okay, so this is the card we're going to make today. The flowering desert. Isn't that pretty? So we're actually going to use the watercoloring paper. And I don't know if anyone has had a chance to use the watercolor paper. This is what it looks like when it comes. And there are five sheets, and it's the size. And so we've actually cut our watercolor paper down. And it's thicker. And what, um, what I love about the watercolor paper is it definitely has the watercolor image. And we're going to definitely get the paper wet. But first I'm going to actually stamp on it dry is how we're going to start it off. But our measurements for my watercolor paper is, the, is just four by three and three eighths. And we're going to start on very vanilla. One of the things about, although you can use your white cardstock with our... Um, watercolor paper. It's not super white. It's a little off-white, so I think it always looks much better on um, the Very Vanilla. So we're going to actually use a Very Vanilla card base. I always try to put it the wrong way. Here we go. Yeah. So, get that nice. I love our bone folders. It's so nice. Okay, so that's our card base, and again, it's a standard 8.5 by 11 piece. Um, cut it five and a half and scored it four and a quarter and folded in half. So that's our card base. And then for our, I'm um, going to take some of that gorgeous, we have this gorgeous sunrise today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a piece of this gorgeous, hopefully I haven't blinded you too badly, of the Grapefruit Grove. And actually, I'm not going to use Grapefruit Grove ink today. I'm going to actually use the Clipsal Coral, but it looks really pretty, and I'll show you how. But I'm going to use this. I'm actually going to cut it down to four and three fourths, and I'm going to run it through um, my subtle dynamic embossing folder, which you guys know I absolutely love. Like it's my favorite go-to. And look how awesome that foil looks. You guys see the texture? You can really see it too on the back, but. It's gorgeous, super gorgeous. So all of their foils look spectacular when you run them through the dry emboss. And again, like this is the di um, the dynamic. So your sandwich is just your regular, um, your big shot base, and your folder in one in one plate. Um, so we're gonna. I, I ran that through and with the textured, the subtle textured embossing folder. Look how gorgeous that is. That's gonna be like our sunrise. As you can see, isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Okay, so, and it's pretty simple. Like I said, it's just the cardstock uh, for the base, this little piece of foil, and a little piece of the watercolor um, paper that's just uh, four inches by three and eight. And then we're actually gonna take, I'm actually going to, to you cut up a piece of Sierra Sand um, with, these lovely delicate lace edgelets. I don't know if you guys have ever tried the delicate lace edgelets. It's these three these three gorgeous edgelets, and we're actually going to use this. This is the one that I use today, and I use it on my um, precision plate. 
So it works really good with a precision plate, and, and for that you need your die, adapter die, with um, your main platform. And then you run it through with one with one um, one of the plates on top. And I just run it through, and then you can use the, the really fun um, brush if you need to, to get it out. I don't usually need to, or you can use your paper piercer, but it came out really nice. So that's just a simple little edgelet instead of a ribbon today. Let me do that. So, um, because it's a little southwestern, but I wanted it to be a little bit muted. Okay, so the, all that so I've already run through and done all the big shot work. I'm going to just do the stamping now. Okay, so if you guys noticed on my um, Facebook page, I did add the colors, and the colors we're going to use today is Calypso Coral, Granny Apple Green. Call Me Clover, and the Sierra Sand. And we're going to do, first I'm going to um, actually just stamp dry onto the piece of my um, watercolor paper. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. So I am going to play with the water. So I want it to not, um, I don't want it to get any water on anything. So I'm going to use my water wa um, aqua planer, and this is the one that's with the bigger, um, the bigger brush. I love the aqua painters. If you guys played with the aqua painters, they're fantastic. Absolutely adore them. Okay. All right. So first I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to do, I'm um, not going to add water to my watercolor paper yet. I'm going to dry just normal stamp, like if it was regular paper. So first I'm going to put the mountains on. Oh, and I use, the mountains are from, oops, you guys, from my son, come in. He just had college today. College started. And he is doing much better. So we're going to use the mountain is the only um, stamp that I'm going to add from the flowering desert is from the waterfront. And if you guys have ever used this one to build, it's fantastic. So we're going to use this mountain set. Where's the mountain on our clear block? Now, if you um, when you use the photopolymer, it's good to use your um, stamping mats. I never use my mat because on my surface I actually have this lovely um, surface right here is um, enough cushion that I don't, seem, I don't really need to use my my mat with me but you if you're at home um, and you don't have one of these mats on there on your stamping surface you might need it so I'm gonna go ahead and just stamp this in the Sierra sand and kind of just like where I want it to go on the paper I usually just stamp one in the middle. See how pretty that is? And this stamp set looked a little intimidating um, the first time I got it. And then I used it and it's so easy because you just you just go for it. You just go for it. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's a lovely mountain range. Three quick little um let me clean this off. Three little stamp image. It's gorgeous. So if you like landscapes, oh, that um, the waterfront's a great one. So that so I'm going to go ahead and set this aside, and we're going to go straight to our cactus. So for our cactus, I'm going to use the Call Me Clover. I actually stamped a gazillion of these and actually had to re-ink it um, over the weekend. I feel I still have a little bit of ink left on my fingers from um, stamping my the saguaro. It's gotten uh, so much uh, use out of it this weekend. It's a great set. Like this saguaro. Actually, I bought this set for the Saguaro and for the project that I was doing. I'll actually post pictures of it. I think it's actually on the thread. I think Teresa had asked me and I put on there, I'm making journals. And it's from our writer's group. And um, the Saguaro is our symbol. So I actually bought this set to make those journals. And um, I just fell in love with it. It's so awesome. Okay. So I'm just going to put it on here where I want it to go. it set for a second. Look how beautiful that is. Awesome! Clean this off. Now you could probably do um, stamp this like on very vanilla but I, I'm gonna add some water to it. When you add water you really should use the watercolor paper. It does make it just move so much nicer. Okay then I'm gonna use my, my um, granny apple green. I'm gonna use, let's see if you can see better on this little stamp. I don't know. The succulent. I'm not sure what 
that one is. Just place it right here by my cactus. See how pretty that is? Awesome. And then, um, oh, I should have done the other one. I forgot. I forgot my little sprig. Okay, so I'm going to get out my clover again and do the sprig. And so this is a little, there's a couple, I don't know what these are supposed to be, and I live in the desert, so I should probably know. Um, but I'm going to use this little one right here. It's like a little sticker bush, but it adds a really nice amount of um, texture to my stamped images. So for this one, I'm going to stamp it twice, stamp it off, second generation, and then just kind of set it in there. I'm going to wash it again. And I'm actually going to... Um, I only want, so that one didn't matter as much because it wasn't that, I'm making it really long, but this one I want it to be a little shorter, so I'm only, I'm only stamping like half of the branch, and then I'm going to stamp it on there three times, so the, so this image was, um, second generation, and then this little bit right here is third generation, can you guys see that? Just for a little, added, a little added extra. And then we need a little pop of color. So for color, I'm going to use this gorgeous Calypso Coral, which is one of my favorite colors. Like, I love Calypso Coral. I really do. And these are the little flowers. They have two different little flowers. And I'm actually using this one right here to go up onto my Swaro. Oh yeah, you love this the settles, Wendy. I love it too. It's like my favorite. And it looks so awesome. The foils. Like I want to emboss the foils now. And I don't know how long it was before I actually started to emboss them. So I'm just sticking it here. I'm gonna get a second one. See how that I've got that going? And then I'm gonna second generation it down below. Just give it a little bit more. Just a pop of color. So I get like a blooming flower. Is that pretty? That's it. That's all we're doing with the clips of coral. That's it. And um, I could probably use the grapefruit grove. But I just love the clips of coral. I just think it was awesome with that. And then I am going to use some memento. So I'm actually going to use the memento because I'm going to put the sentiment right here. And for the sentiment, I was going to use the high there right here and this is from the same from this stamp set and this has gorgeous gorgeous sentiments like you are so awesome be your own kind of beautiful it looks so they look so lovely on um stamped images i'll show I, when i'm finished with those journals i'll have to show you guys because they turned out so awesome so excited okay all right but i am gonna, gonna put the the high there in the memento Tuxedo black, get that nice, and then I'm just gonna put that right there. Muy bien, yay! Okay, so there we go. Now I'm done with that for right now with the stamping. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna actually sit down. I can do this because I'm standing. But I'm, now I'm gonna get out my aqua painter, and I'm gonna add in um, the Clipsal coral at the top. So I, I squeezed it down a little bit. So I get this little well. You get a little well. Or you can um, use your reinkers and put them on a block if you don't want to make your um, your ink your ink cases gooey. It was much easier on it's much easier to do this on the old ones as it was on the new ones. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on, so I just added a little bit, and now it's just wet. I'm adding a little bit of the water first, so I just started the color at the top, now I'm adding a little bit of water, but I'm not taking it all the way down to the mountains, so there's just like a little bit of left, because I don't want it to bleed too much down into the mountains. Just, I'm going to give it a nice, pretty wash. And of course, you can always do this. You can add different colors, or if um, you want it really dark, you can add it, make it really dark. So on my earlier one, I just kind of did it lightly. I'll try to just do it lightly again and add a little bit. So when you have the the car the um, watercolor paper a little bit wet, and you add the color, 
then it kind of moves on its own which is what you can't get when you um, you can use a little bit of water on like our thick cardstock but it doesn't move and you can do, only do a little bit before you start to peel the paper but man, the watercolor paper it just moves so beautifully the color moves so beautifully really makes it gorgeous okay let's see that's I'm bad I wanted like I'm afraid I'm gonna add way too much <laughs> which we don't need that much okay so I'm gonna pull my my um, this is my foil just to kind of see what it looks like on the foil I kind of like that I don't think I want to get it much darker than that so I think I'm done with my coral so I'm gonna put that away Close the coral and then to clean your brushes off you can just you just add a little bit of water onto the paper towel and it's clean it's it okay so now I'm gonna do um, the mountains so I'm gonna get out my Sarah sand again and do a little bit of a well and I'm not gonna do because this lovely um, waterfront is already kind of a watercolory look to it. I'm just softening the edges a little bit. And just be careful when you go in that you don't want to get your saguaro because that call me Col clover will just it will totally spread everywhere. So you don't want to get it too close to that. So I'm just bringing a little bit of the color in just a little bit. It looks like I have a little like a fuzz on there. Okay. Just adding a little bit of the color, not too much. Just bring it in. Like I said, just be careful not to get the green. If you put too much water right there, the, the water will pull the green off. So I'm just adding a little bit to of the brown Sierra Sand to give the whole background look a little bit of a just pull the back in. Okay, so see it's just very light, not too much. It's very, very relaxing. I love watercoloring. I could do it like all day. It's fabulous. Okay, take that away. Yay! Okay, and now I'm going to do it. So now I'm going to dry my brush because it was pretty wet. So I'm going to dry it off a little bit. It's all clean and a little bit dry. I usually touch it to my skin to see just how damp it is. And see now you can tell it's a little bit wet because it's starting to curl. So you just hold it down a little bit. And then I'm just going to drain, just pull a little bit of the water so it was not very wet across my um, Saguaro cactus. You see how it just changes the color? I don't know if you guys can see. It just changes the color just slightly. Kind of blends it. Gives it just a little bit. I like to go a little bit over the edges. Not too much because you don't want to show a lot of color, but I do do a little bit of color because I like like the color. Oh hi Carolyn, morning. Oh hi Karen. I remembered to actually look at my old phone because it hasn't overheated and gotten terrible yet. So I'm just bringing the color in just a little bit. Just bring it in. It makes it so pretty. Give it just a little bit. It like softens all the lines. Although the Saguaro Cactus is pretty, this one is um, almost a watercolor image. They're just really, it's a really great, it's a really great image. It's not super harsh, which is awesome. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush off again. And I'm going to do the same thing with the Granny Apple Green and the Succulent. Just give it a little bit, just so it's, you know, it's a little bit of the green. So I'm actually, um, pulling a little bit of the color to make it not as crisp. So if you don't like that crisp, you know, you can try to keep it completely inside the lines, but I really kind of like it a little messy. Not terribly messy, just a little bit. It just gives it that watercolor look. You guys can see? And now, now that it's clean, I'm just going to do the flower. And I'm not going to do too much with the flower because it's already a lovely image. And you have both the green and the brown on it, so you don't want to get it too muddy, right? So now I haven't used that much water, and it's still it's pretty dry. Um, 
The mountains are already dry. The sky is already dry. So it's very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Love it. Okay. All right. Muy bien. So when you do um, the watercolor paper, you can use a couple of different adhesives, but I find that the tear and tape is the best. Um, actually, the tear and tape actually hit, hit but I'm going to use the, I've got ahead of myself. I'm going to use um, Stampin' Dimensionals. The, um, the foil. The foil, you can hit, I am going to use the tear and tape. When I went through the embossing folder, it curled. So I actually set a block on top of my um, embossing folder after I did it to get it nice and flat because it did curl a little bit on the edges. Um, but I find when you have stuff that curls like this or if you want to lay this flat and it's starting to curl a little bit, using the tear and tape is the best. But I think I'm actually going to use dimensionals on my watercolor paper. I'm going to actually put... So when you put the tear and tape for your foil, you want to try to get some of it close to the edge because you want it to, to adhere good to your paper. I love this foil. It is so gorgeous. Like I, There's so many awesome things in the celebration, but right now this is my most favorite. Uh-oh. Okay, it's still on. My um, phone just stopped. I thought perhaps I was having Facebook issues, but nope. Just that old phone. There's a reason why I don't have that phone anymore. I have my new fabulous phone because it always breaks. Okay, here we go. All right. So you just need to do it on the edges. the The trickiest part about the the tear and tape is making sure you get it off without puncturing your um your paper. So I have to hold my tongue just right so I can get that off. So this is a simple, it's a pretty simple quick card. There's not that much stamping, um, but the watercolor gives it a little bit of an extra um, fun little wash to it. I love the watercolor. And the watercolor paper was fun. I don't use it very often. I should use it way more often than I do. Okay, so I'm just going to take my, um, my foil onto my very vanilla card base and just line it up and just set it down just like that with the tear and tape. So with the tear and tape, it really gets it good. So I don't have to worry about it pull, pulling off of the card. And then I'm going to use this lovely folder. So the um, this edgelet in the um, Sarah Sand, it's the Sarah Sand card shop. If you guys can see, it's got like the stitched image, which is super cute. So it's got the diamonds. It's very southwesty, and, but the stitch kind of softens it. And this is this little edge right here is actually the raise because when I put it on the paper and use the um, the edgelet, I I lined it up on my my big shot like this, so I had a little bit of extra on the edge um, because this one doesn't cut out, this edge doesn't cut, only this edge cuts. So when you put it like that, that's how you get this little bit of a raised. You get a little bit of a raised edge. You see that? A little bit of a raised. And then it cuts it straight because I used the edge of the actual cardstock, which is awesome. And I did it at four. So I cut my cardstock to the to what I wanted to do so I didn't have to actually um, cut cut it down after I big shotted it out. Right? Okay. So I'm actually going to use my tape, or my tape, my glue, and put it down just like that. So, get out my mono adhesive glue. Yay! It is so gloomy. I can't tell if it's the light. We had this gorgeous sunrise though this morning. Absolutely gorgeous. It was like this color. It was so pretty. Okay. So I added the glue just to the top because, and not to the bottom, because so, it's okay if it's not, that part's not adhered down. And then I just layered it on to get it straight, just like that. I really love the glue when you're trying to get something all on there straight because it gives you just a little bit of time to get it. With the tear and tape, once you get it down, it's down. And the same thing with the snail. I mean, you can use the undo 
can get this nail to get it up. up. But anyway, so I don't know if you guys have played with these edgelets. I have only used it a couple of times. It's relatively new. They've been, they're in the annual catalog, and I always forget to use them. They're so pretty. Okay. So, ta-da! So, look, now it's completely dry. So, well, by just adhering this down, it's completely dry, and you definitely want to. Now, if you use a lot more water, you can always lightly hit it with your embossing gun, your heat gun, and to dry it. But... I didn't need to. And then I'm just going to take some dimensionals. Now, if I wanted to, I could put the tear and tape and it would adhere it down. I want to give it a little bit more pop because this is not that um, dynamic. I, I, I resisted using the Winkastella and I resisted um, putting more jewels on there. Of course, you guys don't have to. You can put a bunch of stuff on. So hard for me not to use the Winkle Stella. I like use it on everything. I love it so much. But I thought it was nice, just just showing this gorgeous sparkly, and I love the texture. Like and, and the texture really changes the dynamics. So pretty though, so pretty. Okay, so let me go ahead and get off our little dimensional. They get everywhere. You find these everywhere. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead, I haven't had any trouble with my uh, um, dimensionals coming off because you can always add a glue dot to it too when you add the ribbon if you ever, um, need to add more adhesive to your glue dots, but I, don't, I did not seem to have a problem with it earlier. Muy bien. So look at that. That was it. That was it. Just three, you know, uh, a scrap of the Sierra Sand piece of the pretty foil that you can, you can earn for free with the celebrations and this lovely um, flowering desert set just so fantastic is that pretty love the flowering desert anyway that pretty so I hope you guys enjoyed my card gave it a little bit of a sunset or sunrise I usually see the sunsets not the sunrise because I'm never paying attention but I was getting my coffee this morning and it was shining right through so pretty I'll have to totally um, add, add those pictures up on my on my site and then of course you don't want to leave your back naked or your inside naked so I'm gonna go ahead and use the, the um, granny apple green and this beautiful succulent piece I love it this one's so pretty just look how nice it's in such a pretty image and I'll add it to the inside too so that it's not naked. Here's my chamois. I love my chamois. I'm really glad I cut it, cut it in half. So there we go. Super simple, super quick, and so beautiful. Because you just have to stamp a few images. And it's so pretty. And the cardstock. So just you saw how much watercoloring, not much at all. Barely any. I think it takes more to do with the blends than it does with the watercolor with your aqua painter. So if you guys haven't tried these aqua painters, they're fantastic. And you can get that and the set in my um, online store as well as the waterfront, which has this gorgeous mountain set. I mean, it's so pretty. I love that set. And the edge of dies in my online store. And again, for every $50 you order, uh, you can uh, earn a celebration set or a, if you spend $100, there's actually two different $100 um, things that you can get and in our, and I think it's the 15th of February so what is today the 14th so almost a month away they're gonna actually release new items for celebration so you don't have to worry about getting everything all at once they'll be having more out for us to, to have more awesomeness but anyway so if you um, are watching on YouTube when I put this up on my channel um, and you like my video, give it a like and subscribe and hit the little bell so you get notifications and give me some love on my Facebook page if you're watching this on the replay. And I really appreciate you guys coming and checking out my card and hopefully you guys liked the flowering desert that, that, that they picked. And I'll probably be making some um, images with the, the images, the car, cards with the varied vases, which is the set that lost to the lovely flowering um, desert later on this week on my Facebook page. So anyway, you guys have a great day and um, a great week. And hopefully I'll see you guys ne this time next next week, 1.30. Bye.